It's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Professor John Lerner from Brown University. And he's going to be talking about uh, um, function algorithms and boundaries of uh, complex manifolds. And then basically talking about Harvey Lawson in 1975, but in mathematics history it really makes no difference, whatever, and it's a very up to date kind of thing. So the Davinci is a manifold compact, manifold M. Oriented. And the question is, question one, under what conditions on M uh, does there exist a complex and many variety in the end with boundary M? So there's the piece in the box. And we demand that M is in the compact. CN. Oh. No, they later on did everything inside manifolds beyond that. But I'm going to speak to CN in this hour. So attached to such a picture, we have a function space. We look at all the functions on M, uh, continuous functions on M which have homomorphic extensions as tilde to the uh, variety B. And furthermore, this, uh, we call this space A, uh, is closed under uniform convergence on M because we have the binary functions, we have the local maximum principle, and uh, that ultimately means that the Cauchy sequence on the boundary we convert you in from on the whole B and produce a holomorphic function. So there's a space of continuous function which extends to holomorphic function on B. Old story. If you have a 
polynomially complex curve, and obviously, well, you won't get any new points. <coughs> you even have the addition of information in the theorem that the closure of the polynomials on gamma is all continuous functions. And if there is any polynomial how bigger than gamma itself, the new stuff is a Riemann surface with boundaries of the picture again is this. So that uh, is a very satisfactory state of affairs for one dimension of M.
that pay you the number of linearly independent complex lines in this p sub x. Uh, these lines span a complex, complex linear subspace of p sub x, which we call h sub x. Think of it as the complex, complex tangent space. And here is the picture. h sub x is a complex linear subspace of t. Now, if you have a hypersurface in CP, then for all the points x and m, p sub x in also tangent space, the dimension of p sub x is 2p minus 1, and uh, the dimension of the whole space is 2p. So hence, there exists complex subspace a sub x of the tangent space with the, the complex dimension p minus 1, which means that this is big as that dimension can get. We are now ready uh, for a key definition to take a smooth compact manifold M and C N. Dimension M is 2 p minus 1. Fix a point X in uh, M and let H of X be the complex tangent space. Definition M is maximally complex if the dimension of h of x is p minus 1 at each point x in n, which means the dimension of h of x is as big as it could be in a linear space. Well, and that is a, a, a definition of the foundation <coughs> of the work of Harvey and Lawson. It is very natural that if m bounds a uh, variety, it's going to be maximally complex because the variety of bounds has dimension. But isn't there a small point to check? There's no kind of singularity getting close to the boundary? Well, I'm making myself everything easy on the boundary that they don't, they don't in the paper they work about. There are definitely a variety is going to happen. Singularity, and it's not going to change anything about the maximum principle. Now, I'm not prepared to answer the, in the question period, and I will question that one there is. Once I don't answer. Okay, now, the hypersurface sigma in CP does satisfy our condition that the dimension is P minus 1. And so, such a hypersurface sigma is always maximally complex. So hypersurfaces are your best friend. The variety is right there. You don't have to work. Uh, but it turned out the maximum complexity of m when m is in a higher dimensional space, cn, is still the key uh, condition in order that question one get a positive answer. And this was Ruther Howard Lawson in the paper I mentioned for the case you mentioned n greater than 1, and they also had their own proof of generalizations of the previous theorem for p equal 1, because that concerned connected curves, and they studied the case of uh, disconnected curves. Uh, but, but primarily, the, the, the work is that you mentioned n greater than 1, and the notion that go with that. And as I mentioned, I, they work on style manifolds in general because they came to see it. Now, uh, in the uh, algebra that I said you have to make in this connection, you just model the definition of the notion of directional derivative in Rn, takes a point x0 in Rn, takes a line x equal x0 plus pa, p in the reals, and then you have this picture there. Let f be a function defined in smooth in some neighborhood of point x0. Restrict that to the given line. Take the direction of the derivative of f at x0 in the given direction that is written there. Then take the complex analog of this construction. You now fix a point x in Cn. Choose a complex line L passing through x given by L is the 
zero points x plus zeta a, zeta now being the complex scalar. Uh, a is a fixed factor in Cn. F is a function defined and smooth in some neighborhood of x zero. Restrict f to this complex line and take the dd zeta bar derivative along the line of f of x plus zeta a, evaluate it at zeta equals zero, and uh, denote this number as c sub l, and think of it as the complex tangent to the line l. Now m is a smooth manifold in Cn, f a smooth function defined on m for each point x in m, each complex line in x of x of our complex tangent space, we form this complex tangent C sub L, which is now a functional, defined on the of functions, takes a smooth function f on m, and at each point x, take a smooth extension f tilde of f to the neighborhood of the point, the number that C sub L of f is independent of the choice of extension and we write C sub L of S as C sub L of this extension. Uh, the function F is called a CR function. If this number C sub F is zero, and uh, we will need it to be zero but, uh, at every point of n, but uh, <coughs> the alternative definition, algebraic definition, take the smooth function on M, take its differential, uh, which is, think of it as a real matrix, and then just take, look at it on the H sub X, and it's got to be complex linear on H sub X. That, that makes it CR. <coughs> Obviously, if you have a function defined and polymorphic in the neighborhood of n, then the restriction of the function to n is a C function, <coughs> CR function. It's a generalization of functions polymorphic in the neighborhood. I'd like to repeat the stuff I said about hard talks here. If you have a function polymorphic in the neighborhood of the boundary of the domain B and it extends automatically to the entire domain. But then came the, the very big step forward by Bachmann's extension theorem, theorem. If B is a smoothly bounded domain, and F is a smooth CR function on the boundary, and then F admits a holomorphic extension to the entire domain, which means you replace and living in a neighborhood by right? just smooth on the boundary and CR. Okay, now choose such a domain and such an F as above and put sigma equal to the boundary of the domain as in the picture. That sigma prime be the graph of F over sigma in the next dimensional space, the n plus one. So I have sigma prime is a set of all x, s of x, x of sigma. Bachmann's theorem now tells us that the manifold sigma prime <coughs> is the boundary of some analytic variety as follows. Since f by Bachmann's theorem, since it's a CR then by Bachmann's theorem, there is a holomorphic extension of f from sigma to b which should be known by f tilde, the graph of f tilde on b, this, this set there, the z comma f tilde of z, is an analytic manifold in c, next higher dimensional space, I think it should be n plus one, which boundary, no, no, t plus one, which boundary sigma. Also, since f is in cr, we may verify directly that uh, sigma prime this right is maximally complex. But here we have a positive answer to our question one via the graph of this mm -hmm. tilde. Preceding, which is opposite, is a very special case of the full answer to question one, of one of the full answers to question one, taken by the Harvey Lawson paper, 
because implicitly we restrict ourselves here to the case that M is connected, many theorem, that M be a smooth, connected, compact manifold of dimension 2p minus 1 in Cn, then there exists a unique, irreducible, complex, p-dimensional subvariety V of Cn with boundary capital M if and only if M is maximally complex. That's the result. Now, there are a number of equivalent conditions for maximally complex stated in, uh, in their paper. One of the key ones in the proofs is that if you're maximally complex, then locally uh, M can be written as the graph of a CR function. We should see there is a function algebra on M which plays the role which in the case T for 1, M is a closed curve, was placed by the restriction to M of the algebra of polynomials on Cn. For each point X in M and each complex line L in H of X, we denote the corresponding complex tangent by C sub L, and there's the picture. The definition I recall that I gave before. Uh, now, uh, if you think of the definition d is a the bar of f of x plus theta k and apply a Leibniz rule in calculus, you get the identity one c sub l of f g is at a point x is f x c of g plus g x c of f. And now if we define the function space A that we are saying we are going to give ourselves a new function algebra functions on M by setting A to be the set of all F such that this complex tangent F here F is zero for every point X in M, every complex line through X in H of X. And that space is called the algebra of CR functions on M. And in view of uh, formula one, the Leibniz rule formula, A is an algebra of smooth functions, an algebra of smooth functions, if you can multiply as well as add. And Harvey Lawson get as a corollary of the main theorem the following result. Take a P bigger than one, let M and B be as in the main theorem, that every F in A as a weakly holomorphic extension from M to B. So just as in Buckner's theorem, every CR function on the boundary extended to the region, they can do the exact analog to B. And uh, uh, weakly holomorphic, that means holomorphic are bounded outside of the singular set of B. This is how generalizes Buckner's extension theorem to the case M is not assumed to be a hypersurface, but only assumed to be maximally complex. Now I want to interrupt this and draw a picture, which is, I think, in the construction. We look at the case when M is a subvariety of C plus 1. And we get the projection pi from P plus 1. So you have two complex spaces. You have up here our N.
And now, the your hypothesis is again, it's maximally complex. That's a part of it. Therefore, by what I mentioned, locally, M is given as the graph of a CR function down below. So take a point here, look down to the X prime. So that's 
it's not really a sketch of the proof, but it has some of the geometry behind, behind the argument.
is the intersection number of uh, sigma and y. So the, in general, it be a number of points with multiplicities. So that's the definition of leading number. In the case where m uh, is gamma flows curve in Cn, and p is a polynomial on Cn, and a is the zero set of p, we have the formula of the linking number, which is just a variation of the argument of the polynomial, generalization of, of that notion. Uh, a admittedly is not compact, which it should be from the general definition, but one gets around that by some dodge, which I'll get to later. But the uh, question is, you know, what else you can, well, what you can do with that in, in connection with the uh, maximum complexity theory. Uh, indeed. Yes, I had I met, uh, so far, admit, uh, omitted a very large fraction of what they actually do in the paper, which is they don't just talk about holomorphic varieties we but they talk about holomorphic chains, which are formal sums of currents associated with these varieties with integer coefficients, and uh, you know, which are natural in algebraic topology. So if you have V a P dimensional complex sub variety with boundary, that bracket V you know the two P dimensional current given by integration over V, the, uh, then the holomorphic Teaching is the, in the sense in which they use T, this is such a sum, sigma nj bracket bj. Each nj is a non zero integer, but you don't know whether it's a priori, whether it's positive or negative. And uh, bracket bj is the current of integration over bracket b sub j over this p dimensional decomposition object. It turned out that one of the consequences of the main theorem is a different answer to question one. Question one previously was answered just by the n is maximally complex. But uh, this is an answer in terms of linking numbers that m and y, the disjoint complex smooth manifolds in Rn. I think I repeat the definition, I apologize to this definition. The special case is the following. Let P be a polynomial in Cn, let capital A be the zero set of P, let gamma be a smooth closed curve in Cn, with P non-zero on gamma. Then the length of gamma and the variety A, the zero set, has definition that dimensions are appropriate. It, it is the variation of the argument of the polynomial over this curve gamma, which is just sitting in Cn at the moment, using the work of Harley and Ross and, and, and these polarotic chains that come up in that work, Herbert Alexander and I showed in 2000 that linking numbers provide another answer to question one. Our work in our joint paper depends on earlier work by Alexander uh, that I mentioned uh, linking and holomorphic calls. Uh, we need the notion of moment condition for, for this work, for the case that gamma is a finite union of disjoint closed curves. Suppose that gamma is the boundary of a Riemann surface sigma, that phi be a holomorphic one zero form. So you have to by Stokes, if gamma is the boundary of the Riemann surface, uh, then the integral, uh, and let phi be a holomorphic one zero form, then the integral of this one zero form over gamma equal the integral over the Riemann surface of the differential of phi, but the differential of d, d phi is zero since phi is holomorphic one zero form. So we get a double star, the integral of uh, p over gamma is zero for all holomorphic one zero forms, becomes a necessary 
condition for the existence of sigma. And they, in their paper, how they want to use this uh, uh, called this vanishing uh, the moment condition. Let me uh, be more specific. Uh, you have a uh, E bar flows P P minus one form, and you integrate that over M, and you use the phase theorem and the uh, Stokes theorem, and you get the integral of this alpha over M is zero for all such alpha. They call this the moment condition. It, it appears naturally when P equal one, but uh, you can define it uh, for any dimensional M. And uh, now we make, we, uh, Alexander that, and I made the definition of gamma be a smooth oriented <coughs> one dimensional, one chain, a smooth oriented one chain in CN satisfying the moment condition. We say that gamma satisfies the linking condition. If this linking number, link gamma A, is non-negative for every algebraic hypersurface A in CN, such that A doesn't need gamma. Then, as I then showed that the following, that gamma be a smooth closed curve in CN, such that gamma satisfies the linking condition, then gamma satisfies the moment condition. And so, using Harvey Lawson, is a, uh, so there exists a homomorphic one chain, T equals sigma, MJ bracket BJ in C and minus gamma, <coughs> whose boundary is the current integrating over the gamma. Notice, without the linking condition, all we know from the argument in the general case is that T exists with boundary, I'm sorry, oh, here's the mistake. All we know from the, without the linking condition, from the moment condition, is that T exists, and we have this equality, T is all the more it changes, but NJ is just known to be an integer from that result. So, so, so the, the gamma is the boundary of of homomorphic chain. So what we get if we have the linking condition is that all the NJs are greater or equal zero. So it's, it's a really a positivity condition from the point of view of <coughs> so I, I'll list a few. I have a couple minutes, I think. I'll list a few the related statements. Theorem one, then is a smooth, compact, three manifold in C3. Uh, suppose that the link number, link MA, is non-negative for every algebraic uh, A in C3 minus N, which misses N. Then there exists a unique positive holomorphic two-chain T in C3 minus N, such that the boundary of this two-chain is M. So again, it's a condition of question one. And the answer to question one is, now I stated it for three rather than N because it's more comprehensible, but there is an N-dimensional analog of this, which is, is correct. And uh, the, the adjustment to the definition makes up for the fact that a is an algebraic curve, algebraic surface in CN is not compact. It's that you make all the intersections happen inside of a fixed ball and show that it doesn't depend upon. The ball is large. It doesn't matter, and then everything is compact, so you can use the usual definition of Finally, a personal comment. After my own work on the polynomial hull of a real analytic curve in the 1950s, I had, of course, look for some generalization to higher dimensions than one. And I talked to Solomon Bachner at length, and uh, he chatted nicely, and neither of us came up with a good conjecture.
to a certain Dalai. And I, I just didn't know what to try and prove. I said, polynomial, how long work? And I, I wasn't off to the other notions. And then when one day in the 1970s, a letter from Lane arrived out of the blue, telling me of the Harvey Lawson work. It was one of the thrilling moments of my life. So I want to thank both of them once again for this happy moment. Thank you. students in spirit. And then I, I, don't, I reject the compliment, but that's what I try to. I did want to ask Reese and Blaine. Just a negative sign in front. Uh, what uh, the moment condition you show holds uh, from uh, Max and for maximally complex manifolds, if you show that the moment condition holds. I'm pretty sure that's in your point. Not as it's and we have to open the Well, yeah, I guess it's somewhere. If you take the appropriate D bar closed forms of type, you might. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand why, but my question is is it possible that the converse is true for the moment condition be equivalent? Oh, is it unknown? Well, there is a moment condition that you actually need when you when you go from affine space to projective space, right? So, and I, that's a supplementary condition, as I recall. So I think it's I think it's stronger. Uh -huh. it I, I would like maybe we can there, talk there about two conditions. Uh, one is a moment condition, huh? and the other is the complexity. And in a particular situation, like you see in where you're describing, he is one, but maximum complexity condition is trivial. And the mode condition, that's the only outlaw. He's bigger than one, it's the other way around. The maximum complexity is the only condition. And the frequency condition, one is inverted, is always true. So you have this dichotomy. When you go to projective space, you still have the dichotomy, but the Point changes. But I mean, you still could just give yourself a manifold, smooth, compact, oriented, satisfying the moment condition. And you could ask, what is, okay, then maybe my question is, can you say it's anything it's geometric about it? It's automatic. What I'm saying is automatic. Moment condition is preferred. Everything's set. In higher dimension. No, M bigger than 1, dimension N bigger than 1. And we're sitting in CN. It's not a curve. It's not. Yeah. There is a natural yeah. moment condition, and it's true for any M. Yeah. But, but not with D by alpha. With D by alpha. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to do you have this, say, a three dimensional guy, and you have a two set of them. So I'm playing in, in the CN, the three dimensional guy. The moment condition is automatic. Three-dimensional guy is a little bit bigger, and it sits in projector space minus a curve. Mm -hmm. So the three-dimensional guy has a natural moment condition, which is not all. So you have to pop side. I understand what you're saying about projective space, but we'll maybe sit down. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I'd like to ask a little bit about the function algebra point of view, which is where you started. So, so you have this wonderful theorem you have a curve, and it, it has points in the non-trivial points in, in the polynomial hull, and you have this Riemann surface. But let's, let's take something that's a little bit more, well, something that's a little different. Look at something like a a Lagrangian submanifold in C3. So this is a real three-dimensional, three-dimensional thing, but it's totally real, so I can't bound anything. But 
we know now that there are holomorphic curves, their boundary on that guy. Mm -hmm. okay, you don't know where, but somewhere on uh -huh. this Lagrangian. Uh, you think there's oh, any see, way so of seeing them of the same type? Yeah. Can you, do you think you can see where these curves in any sense from the from the, uh, I, the I, function I, algebra? I want to think about it. And, and the, the existence of curves with boundary on a, on the given thing. Yeah, particularly Lagrangians because they're very. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's, well, if for example, I mean, suppose you knew that the polynomial hull. Uh, of this three-dimensional object, would actually was a, a, a finite house or two-metric. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's any chance it would be a whole bunch of curve? No, no I, 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 I don't know. There is one theorem I wanted to get to because you can replace the notion of maximal complexity, related theorem, notion of maximal complexity, uh, which tells you the dimension at each point of the h sub x by simply tells you it's the same it, it's maximally could be fixed could be p minus one suppose you just say at each point this, you give a dimension a of x and then you ask for all the functions instead of cr but just their directional derivative along those complex lines that you've given is zero you still get an algebra and you describe those algebras. Uh -huh. And there's, well, the, the thing that I wanted to mention is if the, there is no such condition on, on this, and the uh, algebra is part, and, and, and M is polynomially convex and smooth, then the answer is every continuous function is a limit of polynomials. Something attached to each set, to each point. Is, but if you don't get any conditions, the algebra, the social algebra, is all. Any <coughs> additional questions? Well, so, um, <laughs>